Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to God in the Midst radio broadcast. Get them radio. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. As always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is our Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your teacher for the day, Pastor Mark McCoy, and I'm just excited about this word today. The word for this Sunday comes from 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verses 12 through 21, 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verses 12 through 21. So please turn your Bibles to, to Second Chronicles, and then we'll go to the Lord in prayer. My sweater is budging up on me this morning. I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to have to keep adjusting it so I'll feel comfortable. Amen, amen. But we want to go to the Lord now in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. We just glorify you and magnify your name, Lord. You're so worthy of the praise. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come together and, and to share, teach, and then just, just experience your presence, dear Lord. You said where two or three are gathered in your name that you would be in the midst. We thank you this day, Lord, that you're in the midst of us right now. Have your way, Lord. Anoint afresh the Heavenly Father, this technology of Facebook and and, and internet and, and conference call, Lord, just anoint afresh. Anoint the Heavenly Father, all that are listening in the Heavenly Father now and those that will be listening in later, Lord. Just have your way. Anoint your word. Just anoint everything, Lord. We plead your blood, the blood of Jesus that saved our soul. We plead it right now, dear Lord over everything and everybody because we know that you're promise keeping God. You're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power of Christ Jesus that's working in us. So Lord, we thank you this day and we praise you in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Again, welcome everyone um, to, to our lesson today, Sunday school lesson. I'm Pastor Mark McCoy, our Sunday school lesson today comes from 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, uh, the 6th chapter, and we're going to start at uh, the 12th verse, 2 Chronicles, the 6th uh, chapter, starting at the 12th verse. And it reads, Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread it out his hand. For Solomon had made a bronze platform five cubits long, five cubits wide, and three cubits high, and had set it in the midst of the court. And he stood on it, knelt down on his knees before all the assembly of Israel, and spread it out his hands towards heaven. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God in heaven or on earth like you who keep your covenant and mercies with your servants who walk before you with all their heart. You have kept what you promised your servant David, my father. You, you, have, you have both spoke with your mouth and fulfilled it with your hands as it is this day. Therefore, Lord God of Israel, who keep what you promised your servant David, my father, saying you shall not fall to a to fail, excuse me, to have a man sit before me on the throne of Israel, only if your sons take heed to their ways, that they may walk in my laws as you, as you have walked before me. And now, Lord God of Israel, let your words come true, which you have spoken to your servant, David. 
But will God indeed dwell with man on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you. How much less this temple which I have built. Yet regard the prayer of your servant and his supplication. O oh Lord my God, listen to the cry and the prayer which your servant is praying before you. That your eyes may be open towards his, this temple day and night. Toward the place where you said you would put your name. That you, would, that you may hear the prayers which your servants make towards this place. And may you hear the supplication of your servant and your people Israel when they pray towards this place. Hear from heaven your dwelling place. And when you hear, forgive. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. This, this is an awesome, awesome text. Our key verse is verse, um, um, oh my goodness. Let me get my key verse here. <laughs> Our key verse is verse 14. And it says, the Lord of Israel, the Lord God of Israel, there is no God in heaven on earth like you. And so I'm going to say it this way. There's no God like our God. <laughs> there is no God like our God. That, that, that was, was the way that Solomon started off his prayers. By letting it be known there is no God. None. On heaven no on earth, no God under the earth, no God anywhere greater, better, like our God. Oh, hallelujah. And so this lesson today, our key concept, our key concept for this lesson is that we're going to, 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 to deal with there's no God or no one like our God. Praise God, I want this, this cold I got to go away. <laughs> Sniffling and snotting, please pray for me, amen. And then um, the keys for kids for this message is Solomon prayed, he gave his best and dedicated the temple to God. Number two, God kept all his promises and showed mercy to those who, who obey him. And then number three, God hears and answers our prayer. It's, it's just that simple. This is a very, very straightforward and simple lesson. But we want to look at the full story behind this lesson. So as we look at this lesson, the learning facts that we're going to deal with is to recount what Solomon said concerning the Lord's character and faithfulness in keeping promises. The biblical principle that we want to grab from this lesson is to explain how Solomon prayer can serve as a model for, the, for uh, us as Christians in our prayer life. And then finally, our daily application is to praise God for his his, his promises and, and scriptural promises that he keeps for us over and over again. Hallelujah. And so as we look at this lesson, we, we got two parts that we're going to look at. We're going to look at Solomon's preparation and we're going to look at Solomon's prayer. The background of this lesson, the background of this lesson, it is at this time that, that Solomon, who... Um, was given the charge by his father, David, to build the temple, has now built the temple. It's been 20 some years and he has finally finished building the temple. And now it is time to dedicate that temple. 
and he's getting ready to dedicate the temple. And so here it is. Here it is. Um, the, 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 this text that we see here in, 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 in second Chronicles, you could also read it over in first Kings, the eighth chapter. And so all these, these, Chronicles and Kings, they kind of go together. They kind of repeat each other or complement each other. And so here it was that, that, that when, when it came time for this temple to be dedicated, the Lord showed up at this temple. The Lord showed up in a mighty and dark cloud and, 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 and his glory Fill the place as, as they put in the Ark of the Covenant and, and, and all, all it just the Lord just filled the place. And, and, and the priest couldn't even do their job because the presence of the Lord was so heavy. Oh, you got to hear me now. We, we, should, we should always, when we go into our places of worship, the, the, the presence of the Lord should be so heavy that all we can do is give him praise, give him glory, and give him honor. And so here it is. That he goes and he sees this, and he, all the assembly of Israel is there to dedicate this new temple in Jerusalem. Oh, hallelujah. Solomon Temple is now complete and it's time for the dedication. And that's when we get to the part in our lesson where Solomon does the prayer of dedication. Listen to how it starts. And this time I'm going to read it from, from the Message Bible. I'm reading verses 12 through 16. Before the entire congregation of Israel, Solomon took his position at the altar of God and stretched out his hands. And Solomon had made a bronze uh, 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 um, platform, seven and a half feet square and four and a half feet high and placed it inside the court. That's where he now stood. Then he bent down. Then he bent down. Then he kneeled in, in full view of the whole congregation and stretched his hands to heaven and prayed. Now, let's stop right there. Look at his position, his posture. This is the king. This is Solomon. This is the great leader of Israel. And here he is in public view of all the assembly of Israel. And he's now on his knees with his hands stretched out to heaven. What does that tell us? That tells us that he had no shame in his game. He, he, he was glad to humble himself and pray to the Lord God in front of everybody. You know, we have many leaders. They don't, they don't want anybody to know that they are humble, that, that they submit it to anyone. They want to show that they're all powerful and they're all great. But, but here, here Solomon humbled himself and knelt down to pray in front of everybody. Tells us that we ought to we ought to pray in our secret places, and yes, we ought to pray in our secret places. But this this point here, this wasn't the time to pray in a secret place. This this was a, a corporate prayer. But 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 not only a corporate prayer, it was a personal prayer that Solomon wanted to dedicate himself and dedicate the people and dedicate the temple unto God. And so, here he was, 
in the position and the posture to pray. His, his actions of getting down on his knees showed his humility. I'm going to come back to that because humility is very important in the midst of this. Then it says he started praying. So let's listen to this prayer. He says, God, I'm reading from the Message Bible. Oh, God of Israel, there is no God like you in the skies above or on the earth below who unswervingly keeps covenants with his servants, unfailingly loves them with while they sincerely live in obedience to your way. You keep your word to David, my son, my father, excuse me, your promise. You did exactly what you promised. Every detail and the proof is before us today. Let me, let me do it. He, 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 he tells us. There is no God like our God. And our God, our God is a promise keeper. Our God is a covenant keeper. Our God is a God that shows mercy to all of his servants who walk before him. Oh, we serve a mighty God. We serve an awesome God. We serve a great God. And there is no God like our God. Other people have their, their idols, their man-made gods, and, and their idols and their man-made gods are not promise keepers. They'll let them down every time. But the God we serve, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God the God that we serve, the, the God of David and, and the God of Solomon, the God we serve, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the God we serve. There's no other. And he is a promise keeper. He is one that keeps his promises. Now, now, now. What, what, are you, what, are you, what are you getting out of this? What are you getting out of this? When we pray to God, we ought to pray his promises. We ought to be thanking him for the promises that he's already kept. We ought to thank him for the promises that he's keeping right now. And we ought to thank him for the promises that he's going to keep in the future. That's what he did. He said, look, God, oh man, you, you're awesome, God. You, you, you're wonderful. Nobody is like you. you. You keep your promises. You keep your covenant. And you show mercy to your servants. So verse 15, he says, you, you have kept what you promised your servant David, my father. You have both spoken with your mouth and fulfilled it with your hands as it is this day. In other words, keep it up, God. Keep it up, God. Oh, God, continue to keep the promises you made to David, my, my father, when, when you said you will always have a descendant on the throne. Yes, he, he kept his promise. And he gave proof to fulfilling that promise. See, many of us, we, we make promises and, and we can't keep them. But when God makes a promise, God is a promise keeper. Oh, hallelujah. And so he could see how God fulfilled that promise. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he says, Therefore, Lord God of Israel, who kept your promise, your servant David, that what you kept your, now keep what you promised. This is the prayer part. Now keep what you promised. 
your servant David, my father, by saying, you shall not fall to, ha to fail to have a man sitting before me on the throne of Israel. Only if your sons take heed to their word, word, their ways, and that they walk in my law as you have walked before me. God made a promise to David. He wouldn't allow David to build the temple. But he made a promise to David that there would always be a descendant of David on the throne. That promise came with a condition. God made the promise, but he said, this is the condition. The condition of that promise is, is that, that your sons take heed of my ways, that they walk in my laws as you have walked before me. We know David was a man after God's own heart. And David did fall short in many ways, but he knew how to run to God and not run away from God. And unfortunately, unfortunately, we know that 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 Solomon and and then the other sons they they fell to the wayside eventually. But then there came one of the descendants of David who humbled himself, even to the point of obedience to the cross. And he died on the cross for the sins of the whole entire world. Your sins and my sins, everyone's sin. And then God highly exalted him, raised him from the dead, and set him at the right hand of the Father up in heaven. That's Jesus. That's a descendant of David. And I, I just love because he's on the throne and he's going to be on the throne forever and ever and ever. Oh, hallelujah. God is a promise keeper. Oh, hallelujah. And so he goes on, he goes on, and he says in verse 17, And now, oh, now, now, oh, Lord God of Israel, let your words come true, which you have spoken to your servant David. What was these words that he said, not only the fulfillment of that promise, but that God would also dwell in the temple? Oh, yeah. Now, now some of you Bible folks are already jumping on top of it. But, but let's, let's see what verse 18 is, is, is saying here. Let's see what verse 18 says. says but, but will God indeed dwell with man on earth? Behold, heaven and the heavens of heavens cannot contain you. How much less this temple which I have built. Oh, listen to him. This man, Solomon's humble words. God, you going to really come and dwell in this temple that I made? Heaven can't hold you. The heavens of heavens can't contain you. Much less this, this place I've just built. It can't, it's not large enough. You're going to actually move into my neighborhood, God? You're going to actually come and dwell with us? Yes. And you need to understand that God is transcendent. He can fill the heavens. He can fill the heavens of heavens. But then he can also fill a temple. And then we need to understand that under the new covenant, under the new testament, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And when we gave our lives to Christ, when we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, he anointed us, baptized us in the spirit. And now the spirit of God dwells within us. How can this be? That's the kind of God we serve. Because there's no God. Oh, hallelujah. 
like our God. There's no God like our God. And he dwells with us. And he dwells in us. That's why later in the New Testament it picks up, he that is in me is greater than anyone in the world. And he that is in me is my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. That should humble us. That, that should humble us that, that a great and awesome and mighty God would even see fit to come and abide in us, dwell in us, live in us. Oh, hallelujah. And so this text goes on to say, yet, verse 19, regard the prayers of your servant and his supplications. O oh Lord, my God, listen to the cry and the prayers which your servant is praying before you, that your eyes may be open towards this temple, day and night, towards the place where you said you would put your name, that you would hear the prayers which your servants make towards this place. And may you hear the supplications of your servants and your people, Israel, when they pray towards this place. Hear from heaven your dwelling place. And when you hear, forgive. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. David, I mean, the Solomon is praying. God, oh God, oh God, listen to my prayers. Energize, energize and, and devoted prayers that I'm setting before you right now. Keep your eyes open to the temple day and night. This place you promised to dignify with your name. And listen to the prayers that I pray in this place. Listen to your people. Israel when they pray in this place. Listen from your home in heaven and when you hear forgive. Oh hallelujah. I don't know about you but I want to hear God forgive me. I want to hear him say you're forgiven. That's why I pray. And so, in this lesson, we need to learn like David, I mean like Solomon learned, that God can help us walk humbly. God can help us to walk holy. God can help us to walk honorably. There's an old song. It says, standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the hollering storms of doubt and fear sail, by the living word of God, I shall prevail. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God. There's no God like our God. And we can stand. Mm, oh, don't go preaching, boy. That, that, that preaching about to, we can stand on his promises. Oh, <laughs> that preaching was about to come out in me today, y'all. Oh, yes. We can stand on God's promises. Thoughts to ponder about this lesson. Number one, we should always be humbled in the presence of others and especially in the presence of God. Stay humble. That's what I'm trying to tell you or you'll stumble. Number two, the sovereign God is like no other. He's always keeping his promises, especially to those who obey him. Number three, 
God desires to dwell with his people. He loves us. Even when we're low and with a contrite heart and, and low in the spirit, he, he's ready to dwell with us and keep us. And then finally, number four, the most meaningful and powerful prayer we could ever pray is to ask the Lord to forgive us. We've all sinned and we've all fallen short of his glory. And we all need forgiveness. And God is always ready with open arms to forgive us of our sins. We just have to ask. Oh, hallelujah. There is no God like our God. And we can praise him for keeping his promises. And he loves us with a great heart and shows us mercy and grace each and every day. Oh, hallelujah. Before I close this recording on Facebook, I want to give those who are listening now and those that will be listening later an opportunity to pray to God for forgiveness that you might receive salvation. Just repeat this prayer after me. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life. To rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you are now saved. And you can continually to come and go to God in prayer. Because there's no God. There's no God like our God. If you want to join us on the conference call, the number for the conference call is 619-639-4733. And on the conference call, we'll discuss the lesson uh, a little further any questions if you got questions or comments and then we'll also have prayer so just join us on the conference call at 619-639-4733 be blessed and may God continue to help you be a blessing talk to you later Facebook <laughs>